Hello, I'm your host, Leonard Duncan. Welcome to a new episode of ATV Talk and Motorsports Podcast. Please join us every Tuesday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We bring you interviews with industry professionals, live events, live news about the motorsports industry in every episode. Enjoy the show. Whether we are out riding with our friends and family or racing in extreme environments, we all need good tires. That's why I recommend GBC Power Sports Tires, a division of Green Ball Corp. Their products, which include XC Master, Mini Master, and Ground Buster 3, are what leading professionals in the ATV UTV industry are using. You can get your tires at greenballtires.com or find them on Instagram as GBC Tires for further inquiry. Neve Shaw, welcome back to ATV Talk. How are you, young lady? Good. Thank you for having me. Oh, my pleasure, as always. So uh, we haven't talked in a while. We tried to get together, and you had an illness. And um, uh, I was telling you in the in the pre conversation that it scared me when it was your mom that texted me that you weren't feeling well. Yeah, yeah, I was. I I couldn't couldn't do really anything, but uh, yeah, we're all better now. That, that well yeah you've raced a couple of races since then yep yep got two How, let's can we go back to 2022 first before yeah. we roll into 23 um yeah. back and forth i watched a little bit of stuff but loretta's you had um a pretty hard get off yeah yeah first moto Going to the first corner, uh, thought I had the whole shot, and then all of a sudden I just see dirt sky, dirt sky, and uh, it was about third gear, pretty much wide open going down through there, maybe even fourth. I can't really remember, but uh, yeah, we we fell off pretty hard. Luckily, didn't get run over, um, but it, it that one hurt pretty good. Uh, I got up and to walk away, and then I sat down because it winded me a little bit, and then. Uh, my ankle started hurting pretty bad. It was like throbbing. I couldn't walk on it or nothing. So we went and got checked out by the ambulance. But uh, they were like, they didn't think anything was broken. So we went back to the pits. Uh, my dad and a couple others got the bike ready for Moto2. We lined up and went out there. And I think I got fourth in that Moto. But I was going over every jump with one foot because I just it, everything just hurt. But uh, still went out there and toughed it out that did anything other than you know a sprained ankle i'm assuming yeah a sprained ankle it took me about two months to get back fully but uh i woke up sunday and i could not move my neck uh i was having to turn like with my whole body i couldn't move my neck so i got pretty bad whiplash but uh luckily didn't get a concussion i hit my head pretty hard uh because i felt the impact like it just it was a weird feeling, but I was still awake through the whole thing. Uh, but yeah, my neck and my shoulders and stuff were pretty sore, but I landed head first, so uh, it was to be expected. Did you wear? A, do you wear a neck brace or anything? Yeah, I wore a chest protector and neck brace. Luckily, I had those on. It. I think it saved saved me pretty good there. Wow, that's that's pretty gnarly. Um, I also in one of our text messages back and forth you go to college yep yep full time how many credits do you carry uh right now i've got probably close to 120 credits but, but I mean, I got, how many in a semester how many do you carry oh uh i have five classes this semester but usually four so about 12. how do you physically go to college or is it online? I, I do it online right now. You like it better online than physically going to college? Yeah, you get more flexible schedule and with racing, it helps a lot. What are you studying to be? Uh, I want to be an RN. So, in, so uh, nursing. 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 Yep. Wow. That's a yeah. very admirable profession. My, yeah, my wife uh, is a – sorry about that. Go ahead. No, it, it's uh, it's something I've wanted to be for a while. I mean, I don't know. I, I enjoy it. Do you? Did you do any of the candy striper stuff 
or uh, go and, and work in the hospital and, and do any aid work before you uh, decided to do this? No, just from being injured and being in hospital, that something just sparked my interest. But uh, yeah, I guess not a really good way to be interested in it, but uh, it's just something I want to do. I like helping people. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that is a that is a rough way to find your place on the in in the planet to help people is to get hurt and be in a hospital. <laughs> Yeah, I've been in there a couple of times with a couple of injuries, but uh, yeah. That's yeah. crazy stuff right there. Did you build a new machine for 2023? Yes. Yeah, so we took the race machine. We actually had to run that one two, two years in a row, which not like us. We usually like to rebuild them every year, but this year we went completely through it. Uh, thought everything was new on it. So uh yeah, it's it's uh I'm pretty happy with it. Um a lot of people came together to get that thing for this year. Is it a CRF with a Suzuki chassis or a, a hybrid setup? Yeah, so it's a it's the full Walsh chassis. So uh with the 2020 CRF in it. And, but and it's Suzuki based. Just a Honda motor. Just a Honda motor, yeah. And you're still really excited about the way it works and, and the, the setup you have? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm loving it. We actually got a, a second one this year uh, to practice on because the past two past two years, I was having to practice and race the same bike, and uh, the wear on it was just getting too much. So this year we, we found another one. Um, we actually did a little trading with uh, Dane Molander to get it. And uh, so now I have two identical bikes that I can ride. Uh, so I can ride the practice bike and just hop on the race bike and go. So we're not <laughs> all the time on one bike. How much has that changed for you in preparation for each race and for this season? Uh, it's helped. It's helped quite a bit this year. Um, being able to have one bike just to practice on and then one that's just strictly for racing helps a lot because you can just hound out on the practice bike and not have to worry about, you know, hours on the motor and stuff like that. Just wear and tear. Right. Right. I didn't get to meet your dad when we were in Briarcliff. Yeah. Um, he didn't get to come to that one. That's the only one he didn't get to go to. Yeah. It just, just so happens. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it was funny when we were there, I, I walked up to your trailer and Jeremiah Jones is in there. And yep. you guys are having a conversation. I thought I wanted to meet up with him. And it was just convenient that he was already talking to you. So I got to oh, yeah. talk to both of you at the same time. Yeah, he's uh, he he's my neighbor. So I get to see him a lot. Uh, he helps out with me a lot. Uh, he was actually the one that assembled my race bike this year. Uh, he's done it for the past couple of years, actually. Well, since pretty much since we moved down here, he he's been in 2014 he's all my big bikes he's assembled that's that's that dude that's a great guy to have to work on your stuff yeah it, 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 he's he's awesome i i love having him work on my stuff I, I trust him um he's not gonna do anything that's gonna hurt me or anything you know it, it's it's nice to have trust in what you're riding oh i bet it is but so uh, yeah. you've also trained with him as far as him helping with your skill set, what are some of the drills that he puts you through? Um, so I started coming to him in 2013, no, 2012 a little bit too. But when we was little, it was mainly just uh, cone drills. He'd have cones and we'd go, he'd set cones out in the corners and stuff and be like, don't let off till here. And have another cone for where you need to break, get back on the gas and stuff. And he just set, set it all up. And then as we got faster, he'd move the cones around and just kept moving them around just so we could get faster into the corners. Um, then jumping, he uh, – I've never really liked jumping, but uh, we had a couple little jumps, and he would just give me the confidence to get over them and stuff. But uh, we do a lot of work with cones. Uh, they help a lot. And uh, there's there's several different drills we do with cones. There's some like we do like 
figure eight and like weaving through cones and stuff. A lot of brake control, throttle control, stuff like that. How much of a notice in the difference in the way you ride when you do the drills versus when you're not? Do you do you create bad habits when you're not training with him as much? Yeah, so I re we really haven't done anything together the past couple. It's probably, it's been a good probably two years, three years since we've really done any drill drills, but uh, it's definitely it it's different when you're not doing them because you just get lazy when you're you're not doing the correct like going into a corner the correct way and stuff, just getting lazy and stuff. Honestly, need to get the cones back out and and start working with them a little bit more, but uh yeah it, it's a it's a lot different that yeah, i bet it is what did you think of gatorback um it's i liked it um except for those two massive step ups i did not like those uh i saw a lot of people wreck on them so it kind of just like got in my head and uh, but the rest of the track, I, I liked it. It was actually kind of similar to the track we have at the house. Very hard pack, rocky. Um, the rest of the track was pretty – I liked it. I mean, it was something different. Nobody's really been – nobody's ever been there, really, um, except for some of the older guys that were back there in 2006. But uh, I really enjoyed it. Uh, it's a good time down there. Very good, very well-run facility. That's what a lot of people have said is they were really excited the fact that they didn't till when they heard that the water was coming. Yeah, they uh, they actually they spent all Friday. This guy, I'm telling you, from the time we started practicing until probably way after this guy was on the start on this roller, rolling it in. Just like constantly just going over it. So it packed in and I'm pretty sure they packed in some of the track with it, too. But um, yeah, they left it. Even on Friday, like they didn't even, they didn't touch a lot of it. They touched like what they needed to touch, but, but uh, they just left it. So if it did rain, the water would just go away, wouldn't soak in, you know? And that track's been around a long time. So I'm yeah. sure that they have it handled on what oh, they yeah. know it'll, to do and not to do. It was perfect. Like the rain that we did get, it would just like water the track. So they didn't even have to water the track on Saturday. Like it would just, it would sprinkle enough to just, it was perfect. That's, that's what you want. Yeah. Uh, you race, did you race uh, one of the B classes or one of the A classes on Sunday? Uh, I raced B class down there. Yeah. And the track conditions were good on Sunday as well. Yeah, they were good. They were really good. Um, they're, if not better than Saturday, just because they knew there was no rain coming. So they actually kind of got to work more of the track fill in some of the holes but uh yeah it's motocross they're not supposed to do any track maintenance <laughs> yeah no it got pretty rough um friday down there yeah when we when they had a full prep on it when you went to uh, uh underground um you went to two how was underground for you oh that was it was not good for me uh terrible starts I don't know I had really good starts at Gatorback and then we go to Texas and I don't know what happened but I was like mid-pack start so I had to fight my way through both motos to get to second but uh that track was weird this year I've been there previous years and it's never been like that I don't know that I think it was the rain that they got on Thursday and previously throughout the week um made the track really wet so it was got really deep but it got down to a hard base. So the ruts wouldn't be like rough or nothing. It was just super deep. So you were just dragging everywhere. And then some of the corners were flat and like this hard base. And it was weird. I don't know. I've never seen it like that. It's usually real choppy and rough and rutted. <laughs> but uh, did, did it cause you uh, any disturbance in your way you rode or was no, it, just it just because it was, it was just different. Um, uh, I don't know. I was just going in there expecting something that it wasn't. And uh, I don't know, just threw me off guard a little bit. What did you think of the rollers right before the finish? Oh, uh, they were terrible. They beat my brains <laughs> out every time I went through there. I should have just jumped them. Now that I look back at it, I should have just 
jumped him like everybody else. Well, the faster guys were. I know I could have, but uh, yeah, it beat my brains out going through there every lap. What were you thinking? I mean, I, was, I know, I know, I've seen you ride, and I've <laughs> seen videos of you ride. You have skills. What were you thinking to cause you not to do that? I don't know. I uh, I I don't know. I knew I could do it. They're like the Ten Commandments at Loretta's. That's what, literally what they reminded me of. But uh, I don't know it. I don't know. I just didn't. I just didn't just trust in myself fully. But one hundred percent, if I could make it all the way, I don't know. I didn't want to case them. But then people said that you case it a little bit, it didn't hurt. And then I don't know. I was just like, yeah, just beat my brains out, I guess. Isn't the chassis system that you ride more of a frame drag style system for where you can drag a little bit and, and it doesn't upset the way the machine handles? Yeah, I mean, when I'm in, when I was in the ruts, I mean, it would it it just glided through there pretty well. Um, it I think it drug more just because of my stupid line choices but uh <laughs> come on yeah. now but uh no i mean it it's fine i mean it's fine when when it's dragging it's not it don't beat me too crazy well it, that, that 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 happens um but, when you're when you're out there with all the ladies and you see your class is growing oh yeah it's it's getting bigger i i, I love it I mean, when I, when we first started, there wasn't that many in there in the women's class. When I first saw when I was younger, I mean, there wasn't that many like it is today. Um, it's keep, it's, it's kept growing. And at Texas, some of the girls weren't even there. So it would have been even bigger there. How many did you have on the gate? I believe 10, I think. I believe we had 13, 12 or 13 at uh Gatorback. I can't remember exactly somewhere around there. And Andrea wasn't there either, so that would have been another one to add. Yeah, she's not coming back till Iron Man. Yeah, Iron Man's her first one. Yep. Yeah, yeah I, I was teasing her. Um, I believe she's building a new machine. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. She told her it was at Loretta's. She that she was going to build a new machine. That she was going to build a new machine because she wrecked the one she was she had at that time. Yep. Yeah, she wrecked pretty pretty hard um at uh Loretta's and Ten Commandments. Yeah, and Kinsey got hurt. That's where she hurt her knee. Yep. All three of us got hurt there. It's crazy. Yeah, that, that was not the a last good, race of the year. That was not a good day for uh WMX, right? No, that was not. What are you looking for for the season? Um I believe you're second in points. Yeah. um with with two seconds um what are you looking for in the rest of the season to possibly uh switch that around with Kinsey and possibly pulling off some some victories yeah I definitely want to get some victories uh it's been a while since I have I didn't get one at all last year which uh kind of stung a little bit but uh yeah I've I've got a little bit of work to do right now to catch up to her uh she's riding really good right now uh, just got to work on a few little things to get a little bit faster. She's jumping some of the bigger jumps, so that don't help uh, help at all, which uh, props to her because, I don't know, some of them jumps are a little scary to me. Do you – you train on a motocross track too, correct? Yes. Do you have – large jumps on it or are you we we got some good down? size ones we got some good size ones out there we have a we have a 90 foot double but i've yet to hit that i know i could i know how to i know exactly how to do it or just it's commitment issues <laughs> but uh that's a lot of my problem or is it sudden stopping issues that you're worried about yeah i, I just uh i like to grab the brakes a little too much <laughs> but, yeah. well hey i wouldn't jump it either so I, i'm not <laughs> laughing i'm not laughing at you i'm laughing with you because yeah i'm not <laughs> no it's a pretty it, decent sized jump out there i don't know some of them are 
but that, uh, that's a long way. Yeah, it is. I know uh, the guys that hit it out here at the tracker fourth gear, pretty much wide open. That's just fast. <laughs> yeah, and it throws you so high. Do you think that the uh, WMX uh, in, is increasing with the caliber of ladies that you're going to race against, and that they're, they're going to start pushing you guys to do more of the jumps and to ride harder? Yeah, definitely. Um, Kinsey's kind of elevating it a little bit. Uh, just with her ground speed is pretty good. And she she will jump some of the big jumps if she feels comfortable enough to. And uh, that we probably wouldn't have two, three years ago, you know. Uh, the class has definitely gotten faster. And I think some of the – though from – Six place up there. I mean, they're starting to get faster. You're noticing a, a definite. Well, didn't Ellie Roush whole shot one of the motos? Yeah, she whole shotted the first one, I believe. Pretty sure it was the first one, first moto at Texas. Uh, yeah, she, if you watch the video, she was gone like a rocket out of there. But uh, yeah, she pulled the first one. She's pretty good at starts, is Ellie. Well, she's no offense, Ellie. She's not a real big. She's not a real big. So she, yeah. you're, you, you're giving her, uh, you know, Kinsey's tall, and and you're, uh, you yeah. know, pulling more weight. So you're you're giving her a few horsepower right out of the gate. Oh yeah, yeah. Wait, wait to power Did, ratio there for sure. Does she run a hybrid like like you and Kinsey? Yeah, Ellie does. Yes. What does she run? She has the Honda chassis with uh, the CRF in it. Same as same as Kinsey. Same as Kinsey. Basically. Yep, yep. There's a couple of them that actually have the same. I think there's four or five of them that have that setup. I have believe. you ridden? Have you ridden the Honda chassis at all? Yeah. What do you think of it? Um, I. It's okay. Uh, the center of gravity is a little bit higher than the LTR. That's kind of what throws me off. Um, I did ride a lowered TRX, and it was a little bit better. But it just felt like a mini quad when I was on it. I don't know, with the lowered subframe. Felt like I was back back on a little four-wheeler. I mean, I, I ride them pretty good. I just don't feel comfortable. I mean, if I was to get used to it, I think I could ride one. But I've been on a LTR since 2015, the chassis. So it's kind of like... That's just what I know. So let's say they came in with a rule and went production. Would you go track down LTRs like Dane did and race LTRs? Or would you switch over to a Yamaha? Um, so we still have quite a bit of LTR stuff stashed away. Um, but I probably would go with LTR. Maybe a Yamaha. I don't know. I've only rode a couple. So I don't know for sure. I'd have to find something that was set up pretty good for test it out. But uh, I don't know. I, I like the LTR. I always rode good on the LTR. Do you think that the factory LTR is competitive in your class today? Uh, yeah, because that's what I won 2018 championship on was that. Um, I had Andrea and Michelle in there. Uh, I still think we could be pretty competitive on it in tonight today. I'm yeah, I'm wondering because you look at some of the pro sport guys or the pro am guys are winning the pro am on factory Yamahas in a class with a lot of hybrids. Yeah. And I some of the guys go ahead. I still think we could. Uh, we had a really good setup with what we had. Uh we had a lot of things figured out. Uh, Jeremiah was a really big part in that, uh, in the Hill family. They, where Troy had his all set up. We, I, we had, we got Troy's two LTRs is what we had when he switched back to Honda. And, uh, but Jeremiah, he knows a lot about them LTRs. So. Well, but, he should. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> he knows them things. You know, if he he you can hand him a bolt, just a random bolt that you pick out, and he'll tell you exactly where it goes. It's crazy. That's that that's 
a true artist of what he does and and what we do because you have to know where all the nuts and bolts go oh yeah he it's crazy like i'll just it it blows my mind honestly you know caliper bolts are all a certain yeah oh yeah some people just think they're random no they're <laughs> they're different you have when oh, you yeah. look at them you can tell they're different oh yeah he knows i mean he knows everything about them things top to bottom if something eh, He'll have one come in the shop because he, he works on them and he'll start it up and he'll be like, yep, this is what's wrong with it. And he'll fix it. And that's literally what it was. It's crazy. Like he just knows. That, well, he's spent enough time with that model. He should. He, he's also quite the mechanic on other models too, from what I've seen. Oh yeah. Uh, you know, he I've works seen on about everything over there. Yeah. You he, know, fixed, he works on lawnmowers, all kinds of stuff over there. <laughs> it's crazy. Side sides. It's crazy what he can do with with just his hands. It's awesome. It's awesome to see. Yeah, it doesn't slow him down one bit, does it? Nope, does not slow him down. That's 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 in incredible. It's a fighting spirit. I mean, he's. I also, when you talk to him about, uh, I'm sure you do this because he comes and talks to you about your ride on the track and your line choices and things. Correct. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He'll, he'll come talk to me, tell me I'm, where I need to pick it up and how slow I'm going that day. You know, <laughs> he came out to the practice track uh, the weekend before um, Texas and uh, he he just comes out there. He'll just watch me when I'm out there putting in a moto or something, come back. And he's like, he told me, he's like, uh, he said, you need to stop using all that engine brake uh start using the real brakes and just how slow I look going into the corners and stuff. But uh, it's good. I mean, I like it. I, I don't want him to tell me I'm doing good, you know. I need, need some need somebody out there to, to critique me. Exactly. I, I listened to him talk about uh, Joel because we were standing there during the second moto at Briarcliff, and he was telling me, about where Joel was faster yeah, and showing oh, yeah. me, showing it to me and his perception of it and the way that he can pick up on it was incredible. I was, you know, I thought I had a pretty good eye, uh, not compared to him. Oh yeah. He, yeah. He's, he's seen uh, things that I hadn't seen. I'm like, wow, that's incredible. Yeah. He, uh, he picks up on a lot of things. He, he's very knowledgeable. I, I like being around him. He knows he knows a lot about riding and and I mean just the machines. Line choice, how your oh, position, yeah. your body's positioned on the machine. I mean, the, the things that he was talking to me about, and then Joel is probably the hardest one to to critique because his style is so aggressive. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he he has a he has a way different style than anybody else. I mean, he's just just his own style he's on the gas he just never lets yeah. off never lets off no no it's crazy oh man i love to think that i know how to ride and then <laughs> i watch then i watch a video of that or a lot of you i you know i just go yeah you know don't fool yourself you don't know how to ride <laughs> go sit in the back go sit in the back of the bus and shut your mouth you know <laughs> no you, you you laugh but uh, i i don't think i've ever even come close to riding as well as, as some of the people I watch today. Um, the the skills that you guys develop riding from such a young age, and, and you get to go and travel the nationals and 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 participate at a higher level your whole life. Yeah, I've been doing it since I was eight years old, and I'm 21 now. So it, it's been it's a lot. It's been a lot of years for me myself. You're still a baby. <laughs> yeah, I don't feel like it some days. All them years of motocross, if you wake up a little bit sore, I I dread when I get older. I actually get older, like I dread it. If you stay in shape, it's not as bad, right? Because when I wasn't training, the pain was worse, right? And there's days when well, when I get out of bed, I'm just like, oh man, yeah, I, I must be 150 years old. What is wrong with me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, especially after a rough track nowadays too. Uh, 
wake up the yeah. next day sore. It was just a work day for me. <laughs> I wasn't, I wasn't riding. <laughs> yeah. No, there's some days, especially in the winter time for me, just because I've had knee surgery and shoulder surgery. So those don't help at all for me, especially in the winter time. I bet. I bet. But I want to ask you a question about your schooling, if you don't mind. Yeah. I know that RN is your it's a registered nurse yeah. and you're gonna take care of um, multiple different people for multiple different things. But are you going to try to get into a specially specialist style uh, work where you work with a specific style of doctor in a, in a, in a like uh, sports medicine or something like that? Yeah, so I'm wanting to go into orthopedic side, um, probably sports medicine. I've I, before I wanted to be a nurse, I wanted to be an orthopedic surgeon. And then I looked at how much school you have to go for, for that. And I said, just forget that. Then with how much it costs. So I'm like, well, um, we'll go the nursing route. And uh, I want to do something with sports medicine for sure. Uh, in orthopedics, I really like orthopedics. Um, again, I think it's because I've been in orthopedic offices for for, for a few many reasons, you know, but uh I don't know. I just like the environment. I don't know. Something that, you, that That's great that, that you have been able to experience it from the, the patient side and you want to do it from the care side. That That's admirable. Yeah. Yeah. That's just something I'm, I don't know. Want to do it since I was probably 15. My son wants to be a doctor for, um, sorry, Danny, you told me this 10 times and I still can't remember, uh, for for something to do with respiratory, your lungs. Yeah, and respiratory therapist. Uh, he's, a, he's a respiratory therapist now. Okay. He wants to become a doctor the that doctor. specializes in, in your lungs. I believe it's, it, he gave me the technical term. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know what you're talking about, yeah. And um, he said, yeah, that's a lot of school. He says, it yeah. pays great when you get out. Oh, yeah. But to, to, he said before he would be able to really practice um, on his own, it would he would be 45 years old. Yeah, yeah, no. He's 33 now. Yeah, that's a lot of school. Hold on one second here. Something crazy just happened. Oh, there we are. Are you there? Yep, I'm here. I have no idea what happened. <laughs> the, the computer just switched to a different page, and I didn't even touch it. I'm on a Mac. I'm on a uh, Mac, and uh, it. I didn't touch the the pad. I don't <laughs> have a mouse, so. Huh. I'll have to get my right hand gal in here to to figure out what happened. When she's when she's editing, she'll he'll be able to hear us and go and watch it and go, oh, that's odd. <laughs> sometimes, you know, there's distortion sometimes when we're talking. Maybe yeah. the Wi-Fi isn't connecting. When you go back and listen to it later, you don't hear the distortion. Huh. Yeah, the conversation comes through. And I don't that's know how crazy. that yeah, I don't know how that works exactly. Yeah. But, no, that's crazy. You know. Or maybe Valeria is just editing it out, editing it, and I'm not hearing it. But uh, right, right. I don't know if you noticed, but on Friday nights before the races, uh, we talk with Max. Yeah. And and get him on the on the Instagram. And uh, when we did underground, he walked out to the track and was showing us the moisture and and some of the sections of the track. I thought that was so informative. I really, I really enjoyed that. Yeah, I watched a little bit of it, uh, actually, when he was out there by the track. Yeah, what he's going to try to do is is get um, amateurs and other people. So if he ever comes up and asks you to come out there, make sure yeah. you join in. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, because it's, it's – uh, Cody Collier, who races the uh, pro 4 by 4 in um, GNCC, he – called me on the phone um when we were in texas filming the 4130 motorsports promo video uh-huh and 
my my head was not where it was supposed to be and i didn't realize he was calling me on thursday so that we could tape one of those on friday on one of the live instagrams on friday before the first round of the gncc right and when i got home and i called him i had to apologize because i didn't even realize that the race was that weekend right uh I was so wrapped up in what I was doing right. that, yeah, it was it was crazy. Well, I, I, you know, when you first time we ever did a video like that, so right, I had you know no no offense, I was shooting from the hip sometimes because I didn't know exactly how you you're supposed to do it, and I find out afterwards there is no supposed to be how you do it. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's just how it works out right know? right yeah you know you know you race the best laid plan doesn't always work no 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 <laughs> definitely not um how much strategy do you and your your team talk about i'm assuming it's your dad and mom that you're strategizing with uh, how much strategy strategizing do you guys do uh, on Friday or Thursday before the race to to set it up? Um, you know, like uh, like this, the race weekend? Yeah. So, I mean, me and my mom usually will drive there. Uh, we'll get there Thursday because you got to get in there and get set up. But uh, my dad usually flies in just because he's got to work. But there's a few that he'll drive to, but uh, – yeah, we get all the pits set up and usually we just use Thursday of the day to relax because all the driving we did and then, uh, you know, do a track walk and stuff and check out the track, make sure we, the bike's ready to go for Friday practice. Um, then we figure out uh, once we get on Friday practice, we uh, see where we need to we need to work on throughout that day, you know, bike adjustments and rider adjustments uh where we need to be faster and stuff you know um then saturday we just kind of go off of how we were friday and just go in go in there and do what we need to do and and you talk about you know line choices or or the whole shot and yourself through the race at all yeah um uh, so usually like me and dad will go up there before our motos and watch a couple starts, see where the starts are coming from, find good gates and stuff. And then uh, we'll watch, uh, watch a couple races before to see where the line, where the good lines are, where the fast lines are and stuff. Um, then once you get out there, you, you kind of see it more because you can't see the whole track from just look, going up there and looking like, uh, like all the lines, like, where you need to go and stuff but once we get out there and the first lap goes through you, you kind of figure it out but uh that's just how we we kind of go with it how much does for you how much do the lines change from friday practice to saturday race um so normally they don't really change too bad um saturday are a little bit different because the pros are out there and they they make up some pretty pretty good lines that, you know, some of us just don't see on Friday because of how more advanced uh, they are than the rest of us. But uh, you'll find – you'll pick up on, like, when you're watching their qualifying and stuff, some better line choices they take. But uh, it's not too, too much different from Friday to Saturday. That, that That's – that's odd, isn't it? Because doesn't the track get pretty beat up with the amount of ATVs that are running around it? Yeah. So Friday, they're pretty, they get pretty rough on Friday just because of how many sessions there are, how many people are out there. Like the, like the last, the round three of practice on Friday towards the end is pretty beat because they, they don't prep the track, you know? I mean, why would they at the end of the day? So it gets pretty beat out there, but um, I don't know. Sometimes it's very similar. No, your hard pack tracks, they don't really get too beat up, but like your sand tracks, like Texas was from Moto 1 to Moto 2 for us, it got pretty, got pretty bad, but they did prep a few sections. It was weird. Like 
because the pros went just before our second moto and uh, they ran a different a little bit of different section so uh like they had a pro section incorporated in so that half of the track was kind of like prep because it, where they exited to go off into the pro section and where they entered it was all different like the lines and stuff so they prepped it so that was like prepped and some of the other corners were prepped flat but then there was still the roughness going in and the middle of the corner was flat and when you come out of the corner it was rough again so it was just weird that moto but uh you kind of figured it out once you got a lap or two in it was just, it was just like patchy it's weird how often do you cut your own line off of the, the 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 grooved in line so if there's like a super deep line or a rough line i'll just cut off of it and go find the smoothest path that is like the fastest like i had a pretty good line um the straight away before the rollers at texas uh you come off like this anthill thing and straight into uh like a 90 degree right hander and there was this long rut on the outside that literally everybody was taking and uh it was so deep and then there was a huge kicker about halfway down the straightaway so I'd come in there and I'd just square off the berm and just go around that so you didn't have to hit that huge kicker because I mean it was just it was crazy it was crazy just how deep it was you're not dragging you know I, I pick up on a little bit of things like that and and your line choice does it change much during the actual race um not really i mean i'll look around a little bit to see what if anything was better but i usually try to stay to the, the same the same line try to hit it consistently how much do you okay the the, the way i want to phrase this is um the pros when you get to watch the pros which of the pros are you uh, picking up tips from while they're riding or do you do it with multiple of the pros? So I, I go out there and I watch a couple because a lot of their riding styles are different. Like uh, the main ones I really watch would be Joel and Chad because Chad's very calculated. He's a very calculated rider. Um, I, I like to watch Chad a lot. Um, then uh, Brandon um i like watching him he has some unique some unique lines and stuff he likes to take um uh, and then jeffrey jeffrey uh watch him a little bit and then i'll watch the others but uh those are really one main ones i kind of focus on more just watching their lines you have seasoned veterans there with joel chad and jeffrey um where the you know, the, the, the resurgence of Ristrelli is showing his experience, you know, because he's doing a lot better this year. Oh, yeah. Uh, Jeffrey was riding really good down at Texas uh, and Gatorback, too. He's uh, he's he's doing really well this year. It, yeah. And uh, Bryce Ford, you know, being yeah. the first point leader other than Joel or Chad in 12 years. I mean, that's yeah. Yeah, it was, that was crazy. That was a crazy race at Gatorback, for sure. Oh, yeah. Like, there was so much going on. Then the Jeffrey and Bryce battle was insane. Like, the whole moto. All 18 plus 2 was, like, that's what everybody was watching. Nobody was watching anything else but them two, both of them races. It's crazy. Yeah, because they were going at it. I mean, just duking it out. I mean, they're passing each other, passing each other back. It was awesome. That's exactly what our sport needs. Yeah, it, it was more enjoyable to watch because, like, sometimes it's just you know where everybody's going to finish, and it's just, like, it's not fun to watch. But that it's gonna, it's interesting this year because there's there's quite a few that are right there with each other in battle. Even that uh, uh, underground – uh, Dane, Adam Ulrich, and uh, Vince Merman, they were in the very back of the class. But, I mean, they were just going at it. Like, it was it was a good race just between them. They had their own race going on back in the very back. But, I mean, well, they, hey, that's... They were, oh, and Aaron Salinas, he was in there, too. I mean, this duking it out. I mean, hitting each other. I mean, side by side. Oh, there were three wide going across the finish line one time. It was insane. 
That's great. You, you got to love that. And that yeah. you brought that up. You meant that you were paying attention to it. Oh, yeah. It, I mean, we we wa- I was watching by the rollers. So, I mean, we seen everybody come through there. And, I mean, it was insane. I mean, they were passing each other, passing each other back. It was, it was a pretty good race. What did you think of Chad coming back with a broken collarbone? He's just an animal. Like, he's a different breed. I don't know how he did that. <laughs> Like 17 or 18 days post-op with a metal plate. The bone's probably not completely healed at all. And he's out there and gets second. Whole shot, second. Holds off Bryce Ford. It was, I was I was just amazed, honestly. I knew he was going to do good, but I, I don't know. He He's – that was just insane. They were They were just looking for – uh, a point, a good point finish, you know, yeah. nothing special. Very, yeah. And it to was, roll out there and drop the, the, the two, two, they, they, un, un, unbelievable. And yeah, the lead. I mean, there it is. It really is. And the, um, and the lead. Yeah. He was leading the, the second moto, I believe it was. Yep. He led for a couple laps, I believe. And, uh, two or, two or three. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, we were like, this is crazy. But and it was a rough track. It wasn't like it was just a smooth track like Gatorback or High Point or something like that. Like it was pretty rough out there for going for 18 plus two, you know. Like that's no joke out there. Not at all. I got to reach out to Chad and he told me the whole story. So we actually aired it today. Yeah. Yeah. And well. Everybody's going to think that it's the day that we're you and I are doing, but it, it's you know uh, Tuesday, the April eighteenth is when we aired it, and it's uh, an unbelievable story. Yeah, yeah. The, the things that he did, the days after. What I was most impressed with is the fact that Chad and Joel had a conversation amongst professionals and made sure that they both understood that that they're professionals and and neither one would do anything to hurt the other one intentionally yeah, yeah. no it was just a racing accident you know they that's uh that's how they make a living so they're both not gonna let off going to that first corner for sure exactly and sometimes i wish the spectators the fans the haters on either side would realize that these guys are the ultimate professionals. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, what did there's 11 championships there? Yep. I believe so. Chad's got eight and I believe Joel has three. So, yeah. I mean, there's 11 titles just in those two guys. Yeah. And they've not hurt each other. Yeah, in those 11 years, well, it's more than 11 years they've been racing each other. Yeah, because uh, there was a few other guys, a few different guys in there uh, when Joel was first, you know, coming in. And, you know, he didn't exercise that he was the guy yeah. uh, to, you know, to fight with Chad um, immediately. He was doing well immediately, but, yeah. but not, you know, taking over that spot. So. Right. Lots of good things and strange things are happening. Uh, I'm enjoying it, even though I don't get to come and watch there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, uh, it's been a good season so far. Very interesting. Yeah. I, I totally agree. You're every class. It seems like that I'm following and I'm trying to work in a couple of the amateur classes with Max feeding me some information because he's the guy that's there that that does the the reports with me, um, but I follow the the W, uh, MX, and the Pro Sport, the Pro Am, and then the Pro Class. And like I said, we're looking into some of the other amateur classes. We're trying to, anyways. Right. Um, yeah. And get a good feel for how everybody's doing. Uh, you know, in the Pro Sport, in the Pro Am, you have five guys that are 
capable of winning, maybe six that are capable of winning on any given gate drop. Yeah, they're pretty stacked this year. I know they've had full gates and qualifiers for Pro Am um, and Pro Sport too, I believe. It's uh, they're pretty packed classes this year, and there's, like you said, the top five, six. There, any of them can win any given weekend. It's it's pretty good. I know at Texas we watched the first Pro Am moto, and it was it was pretty good. Just the battles that were going on. Yeah, at any given moment, you don't know who's going to win. No, until you don't. In. Not until the yeah. checker flag flies, you don't know. Right. But that's that's what makes it so much more fun to watch and be a part of it because it's so competitive. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the WMX class this year, I mean, Kinsey's just kind of walked away the first two, so there's been really anything interesting going on in it. Then Andrea's not out there yet. Or we kind of just – there's a couple battles, like, um, further down, but uh, your top couple there, uh, they kind of just ride by themselves is what I've – the first two. Well, I'm sure that you're going to throw a line out and hook onto that grab bar and Kinsey and, and yeah, reel her back plan. in. That is the plan. We got to do something. Can't just let her run away like, it, like she has been. But uh, that's the plan. I've been putting in some work for High Point uh, here recently. Do you like High Point? Yeah, it's very similar to my track here at home, hard pack base. You know, I should be good at it. Um, I've won there quite a bit over the years. Um, it's a good track. You're not overly excited no, I mean, about it. It's not my favorite, but it's not my least favorite. It's a good Where's track. Your favorite? Uh, Sunset Ridge. Okay. I like sand. But you know. practice on hard pack. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense, but yeah. Don't make what's any the, sense. What's I don't know. the reason you like sand? I just, I like rougher tracks. I don't know. I I can kind of ha- manhandle my four when it gets rougher. Uh, I'm pretty strong. I got a pretty strong upper body, but uh, I don't know. I just like the sand. The way that the track flows there, always liked it. Always liked it up there. But uh, oh, I don't that's, know. It, it's a new one for me. But yeah. yeah, I mean, I ride on hard pack almost every day, and hard pack slick blue groove. But I like sand better. Like nobody knows the answer. No, not at all. It's not just, at all. It doesn't make any sense. But uh, yeah. Were you part of the vote for WMX not to go to Daytona? Yes. Can you give me some insight why you guys didn't want to go and have the exposure? So, I mean, last year was kind of just a mess down there. Um, I've been there previous years before last year when they let um, some of the amateur classes go. I believe it was 2015, 2016. Uh, maybe 17 I can't remember but uh I was there in 18 uh for my first I was my first WMX race was down there I don't know the track I just the track just doesn't really it's nothing to be really the past couple well last year the track just sucked honestly then it didn't help <laughs> it didn't help that it rained so much too and then we walked out there to literally a pond but um I don't know I didn't like how people just sign up to say that they race Daytona. Like there's a bunch of girls in our class that signed up to race and then they didn't race any other race throughout the year. Um, That's kind of what was, it kind of ticked me off a little bit, but, uh, and then with the track being so wet in one line, you go out there and I got stuck behind lappers like crazy because they wouldn't get out of the way. And uh, I mean, I was like screaming and riving and everything because I got a bad start. And then I caught up to Andrea won that one. And then Kinsey was in second. I caught up to the back of them two. And then they, the lappers let them two buy. And then here I am. And they wouldn't let me buy. And I'm like, what the heck? So uh, that's just one reason I don't like it. I don't, I think a, a lot of others 
it's also expensive to go there. It's not like your normal national. It's you got to pay a lot more to go down there just because of the the speedway and stuff. But uh, I tried to tell the girls when they voted to go, like it's nothing. It's co- the experience is cool to save race there or whatever. But um, I was like, it's nothing really special. Like once you do it, then you'll be like, okay, whatever. And uh, a lot of the girls came back to me after we had braced it and they kind of thought about it and stuff. And they're like, yeah, you were right. It's nothing really that they wanted to do again. But what about the exposure? I mean, it was, it was okay. Um, I guess the, the stuff that was posted online was okay, but there wasn't really that many people that are watching. I mean, the, the vintage dirt bike guys, but you're maybe the, the racer TV time, but that all matters. But uh, I know it does, but I just, I think a bunch of us were just kind of fed up of it after. I think the experience that we had wasn't, wasn't the best. And then a bunch of us top ones didn't want to go. A couple did want to go, but they didn't really take their opinion. Because us... Because I Kinsey was just Kinsey said, I believe Kinsey said no, I don't remember, but Andrea said no, I believe Ellie said no. Um, there was a couple others that said no, so it was kind of majority didn't want to go. So, uh, yeah, I, I think that if you all vote and you don't want to, that's great. I would, I'm a huge advocate for, but I'm not also paying the bills, so yeah. Um, uh, you know, shut my mouth, move to the, move out of the way and let you guys take care of it yeah. and, and just support you the best way I can in, in your decision. I just wanted to know what your thoughts were on that. Yeah. I, I, I don't really, I don't know. I didn't really like it. The track usually isn't the best down there, but it's a super cross based track. So you got to kind of put that into perspective, but uh, no, I think the experience that we all had just because of the rain and then the gate didn't work. We had to do flag starts and all that. It was just, it kind of felt like a joke that we were there, you know. <laughs> yeah. So pretty much everything it. went wrong that weekend. For it was just it was just not a good weekend. Well, Tuesday, I guess it wasn't even a weekend. Yeah, it was a Tuesday, and and, and yeah, it was it was a better weekend this time. Yeah. Um, hopefully, if if you guys ever decide to go again, it will be a good weekend. Yeah, it, I think that was what kind of ruined it. Was just everything that went wrong. A lot of people just didn't want to go back and spend the money because, I mean, it's a lot of money. Then you have to take off pretty much the whole week to go there because a lot of us don't live down south. We all live pretty north. Yeah, that's true, too. I get it. It's on a Tuesday. I I think that was the biggest thing, too, for a lot of them. them It takes away from your budget for the year because that one is so expensive. Yep. Yeah, definitely. But uh, no, there's there's a couple of reasons there. But yeah, it's great that you would talk about it so openly, and and that, that's excellent. I appreciate that. Yeah, but no. Uh, hopefully, we can get this year back rolling. Well, I'm sure you will, Neve. I want to say thank you so much for taking the time. I know that with school and racing and and, and other things going on in your life, you're probably super, super busy. Um, East Coast time versus West Coast time, you're probably getting <laughs> yeah. tired, tired no, as well. No, it ain't too late. I'm still on Central time, so it ain't too late here. That's that's good. That's good. But, uh, um, I thought you were East Coast time. Nope, nope. Uh, Central time here in Kentucky. Really? Yeah. You're pretty close There's- to the... I'm pretty close to the line, about an hour from the, the Eastern timeline. Wow. Pretty That's close. crazy. But I just want to say thank you for, for giving me some time and, and going over these topics that we had. I really appreciate it. And I, I wish you the best this year. If you need anything from ATV Talk, please reach out to us. We'll be more than glad to help out any way that we can. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. The team here at ATV Talk would love your feedback. Please email us at hello at ATVTalkPodcast.com. If you're in need of a consultation for your current racing program, 
a custom ATV, or an industry guest speaker, I have the company for you. Duncan Technologies International Inc. offers host, MC, and guest speaking services at events. Builds custom ATVs for recreational riding or racing around the world. And they offer consulting services for professional teams or individual racers. Send inquiries to duncantechinternational at gmail.com or call 619-716-1532 for more information. Thank you for listening. We hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, don't forget to share us with your family and friends. The podcast is available on all streaming platforms, and you can find us on social media as ATV Talk Podcast. We're on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, Rumble, and Twitter. 